Hey, this is Joel at Blank TV. Uh, we are finally here. BVB Army Kids. You've been asking us this for a long time. Sorry we missed you at Hot Topic. We're here with Andy Six from Black Veil Brides. What's up? Uh, about to do a show. Andy, thanks so much for seeing us. Thank you. This is really awesome. Uh, we've got some questions. Okay. Uh, lots of different questions in, in no real random order. Um, okay. That's the magic of editing. Um, but we've got uh, Matty Buchanan from Tennessee. I'm having lots of crazy dreams lately. What was the weirdest or scariest dreams you have ever had? Die Hard BVB fan. You know, it's not really scary, but recently I had a dream that we've all sort of been talking about here in the in the bus for a while. Um, I dreamt that one morning we woke up and all of our parents were dead, and but in in like for whatever reason, when we all of our parents had died, we all became ever seen like the Muppet Babies. We became Muppet Baby versions of ourselves. So we were all children. <laughs> And we looked like ourselves, like we had our stage makeup and like we listened to the same bands and everything, but we were baby sized. And our tour manager, John, had to become our Dave, like Alvin and the Chipmunks. And he took us around to malls and we stopped making like heavy music and we were, we were just like a little chorus of, you know, like little punk rock looking babies. So <laughs> that's the weirdest dream that I've had at, of late. Black Love Rides Muppet Babies. Uh, there could be a line for that one. <laughs> Since a Google search coming on. Um, oh, you, yeah, there's a lot of makeup questions. I know you get those all the time. But Audi Six Brides, uh, uh, how long does it uh, take you to put on stage makeup now? Um, about 45 minutes to an hour. But uh, again, I was, like I said to you before, I, all of us in the band have sort of been obsessed with, you know, like I was a huge Misfits fan. Like I mentioned to you guys, like The Damned and those kind of bands that had this like, sort of vampiric look to them or scary horror look. So since I was a little kid, I was, you know, standing in the mirror trying to perfect how to make a skeleton face or something else and so for our makeup it's a sort of it's all derivative of things that I liked as a kid you know and obviously there's like elements of Kiss and Motley Crue and these more like metal bands in there but I think it's just me being like a weird punk rock kid that didn't have any friends and sitting at home painting my face to be these other characters that I sort of created so yeah, about an hour I think because we got all the body pain shit um, that you know sort of adds to it, but I'm also I have horrible ADHD, so I could probably get it done faster. But I like to like annoy our tour manager and make silly voices and listen to Jermaine Jackson's solo album to annoy everyone. <laughs> for us, I mean, we this is the way we look, and this is how it's you know natural for us. I mean, I think that all of us are probably more comfortable in our stage makeup than we are outside of it because it's sort of the personalities that we have and all of us sort of have our own way that we do it and, and you know we dress up in a specific way and we like to portray our image and you know, it's sort of we like it so if anybody else gets pissed off I don't really care you know if people look at us weird it's whatever you're wearing like normal people clothes this is what I think is normal so it doesn't bother me I'm and I'm also prepared to fight anyone who thinks otherwise so uh, I don't I don't really care I defend who I am and I think that that's one reason that our fans you know it resonates so much with them is that we don't you know we don't take crap from anybody and, and we know that some people think that how we look might be silly or whatever else but we like this and I think that it's up to everyone to choose how they want to look or express themselves visually in their life and if people don't care it gives a shit you know Hey Amanda uh, O'Dwyer, my question for Black Veil Brides is what would, you, what would you suggest to someone who's going through everything that you've been through, bullied, picked on for what I look like? You know, I, I think that uh, the general response would be, you know, and what we normally say is that you, you should feel comfortable in who you are and know that no one can really tell you how to be. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of what anyone says about you, as long as you're confident in who you are, that's all that matters. And most of those people that will tell you that you're, you know, a gay or a fag or emo or any of these other, like, silly titles people come up with, those people all fall, fall by the wayside. I mean, I know in my life, I was, you know, the kid who thought I was Glenn Danzig and I had a devil lock and I wore skeleton gloves every day and that was who I was and nobody really understood that and I was constantly called fag or anything else and the vast majority of those people now are, you know, the drunks down at the bar or, you know, they have nothing to speak of their lives because they didn't have any sort of drive and I think that it takes having to deal with that sort of, you know, um, hatred from other people as a, as a, as a youth to, to understand what it's like in the real world and, you know, you should you should be proud of the fact that people care enough about you to uh, to talk to you negatively because you could just walk through your life and nobody ever care and then you wouldn't be able to build the strength within yourself. So if someone messes with you for the way that you look, just understand that they're clearly lacking something that you have, which is, you know, heart and strength in yourself to be creative and, and to be the person that you want to be. Uh, Ken Boo, uh, Kendall, he's from uh, Fremont, Ohio. 
um, and he wants to know if any of the band members believe or support gay marriage. I want to ask you, uh, do you support gay marriage? Yeah, I think that, honestly, it would sort of be inconsistent with our message to not say that, you know, I think it's, obviously, um, none of the band members of Blackfield Brides are gay, but, you know, we, you know, Sandra, our, our previous drummer, she was gay, and, and I think that it's important to us to support, you know, people that want to live their lives. I mean, it's hard, far be it for me to tell someone that they can't do something that they want to do. You know, I mean, I don't, I want people to be able to live their lives the way that they want to, and, and I fully support, I don't, listen, I don't think in the world some kid who, you know, grows up in, like where I did, like, say, Kentucky, goes, you know what, my life sucks, kids make fun of me, I can't, you know, I can't date the girls that I want to date, so I'm going to be gay, because that's going to make everything easier. It clearly doesn't. But the prejudice that happens in American society, especially, the choice, the supposed choice to be gay is not a choice that anyone would make. So why would people consider it a choice? You know, it's something that clearly is, is some, you're, it's innately built into you, and, and it's silly to think that people are choosing to be gay. And that's just people wanting to be comfortable in their ideals. Everyone wants to have something that they, you know, I know that this is, I know that that's brown, I know that that is black. And I know that, you know, people are supposed, man is supposed to be with woman. It's, it's ways to make people comfortable. So, you know, I think that if you can, if you can live the life that you want to live, and, and maybe if it shakes somebody up, who gives a shit? You're going to have to edit out all my laughing. Cause yeah, no, that's, <laughs> oh, here's an interesting one. Our girl's name's Katie Bug from Columbus, Ohio. I'm a huge fan, so here's my question. I really hope that uh, you can answer it. It would mean the world to me, but you don't have to answer all of them. What's the most inspiring thing about your fans? Everything. I mean, you know, to be able to go on stage every night and, and play a show and see people that are singing, you know, words that, that I wrote back at me and, and for us to be able to play our music and to know that it's affecting people in the way that it's supposed to be. The reason that we created this band and the reason that this band exists is because we felt like there was a severe lack of community in popular music. Obviously in the punk rock world or in these other sort of niche worlds there's a sense of community, but as far as like popular rock and roll music goes that doesn't really exist, it's sort of, you know, it's shitty songs that aren't about anything and you know everybody's striving to get the next you know radio rock single but for us we want people to feel like they're a part of something and if they like our music so much that they come to a show and they dress up and paint and they feel like it's part of their lives and that's the greatest feeling in the world so you know it's, it's paramount to, to me being who I am and so I, I appreciate it you know immensely you know what was uh what was one, like, one of your first shows that really just got you so inspired even back to the Ohio days, I'm not even sure? You know, I, I don't know, I don't think it was necessarily, I mean, I can remember seeing like, you know, going to like early Warped Tours when I was a kid and seeing like Rancid, like Dropkick and those kind of bands and seeing this sort of like community vibe of the fans and, and seeing like them get up in people's faces and the kids sing with them and that was always really cool or like, you know, early days of AFI and the whole visual presentation, but it wasn't so much shows for me that influenced me. I mean, like my biggest influences were Stiff Baiters and, and what was the new church and the Damned and those kind of bands that had this sort of like really punk rock attitude but a very cool visual presentation. I've always been into like horror movies and comic books and stuff so our whole image and you know the whole idea behind our band is to sort of look in, you know a, a, as much as we definitely borrow from stuff like Lords or, or the Dead Boys or the Damned or you know those kind of bands. What's uh, do you have any favorite horror films? Uh, I, you know I love like old school films or like even like German expressionist films, you know, sort of like Nosferatu and those kind of things, but yeah. The Man Who Laughs, uh, black and white sort of creepy stuff. You a Peter Murphy fan at all? No, no, <laughs> I, I don't know anything about him, so yeah. I'm not going to pretend to know. Bauhaus, no? No, you know what, I, 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 I mean, obviously I know, I know of Bauhaus, but it's one of those things where I'm a singer and I like melody, and there was never enough, you know, melody in, in Bauhaus songs, like, <laughs> and I get it, like, it's fine, but I'm not, you know, I'm not a huge, like, death rock guy, I've never been into that stuff, but... I get it for what it is. I love like Sisters of Mercy because it was more, um, I guess it had more like punk rock elements to it. It had more like choruses and a little bit heavier and, and it seemed less like, you know, artsy. You know, I, I'm I'm too dumb to understand artsy. I like stuff that has, you know, like drive behind it and, you know, a big chorus and sort of balls to it. <laughs> awesome. I don't, I don't pretend to understand what, you know, cool people like. Never get it. It's <laughs> 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 well, some heavy shit. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Would, uh, would you guys ever, um, if so, if you were offered to be a sponsor for Mac makeup, would you do that? Sure. 
money. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I have no artistic credibility whatsoever, so I'm not afraid of selling out. I feel like selling out equals success. Listen, the minute that anyone sells a t-shirt that isn't recorded music, or they sell any sort of merchandise, they're immediately selling out. The only thing that you can really do to be a true artist is just to make music. So what we do is we're a multimedia thing. We are a band, we are a visual presentation, we're a merchandise deal, we're everything. We want to be all things to all people because that's what that's what this world is. We these guys are sure. the hugest sellouts, these two. Are exactly. That's <laughs> There's no such thing as selling out. Exactly. Listen, I don't care how you know fucking punk rock you think you are or how awesome you think you are. Don't judge me for selling t-shirts to our fans. You know, and that people people give so much shit to like Jerry only for producing so much Misfits merchandise. But that's cool. When I was when I was younger, exactly. That stuff didn't exist. That that, that didn't exist when When I was 12, 13 years old, that stuff didn't exist yet. And I wish that it had because I spent hours taking those same fucking canvas shoes and painting that logo on there. I wish I could have just gone to the mall with my mom and picked it up, it would have been that much easier. So for for this band to be able to have an opportunity to, you know, market ourselves everywhere. And Mac Makeup, they want to get behind us, which they have, by the way. No if they want to they no. get behind us and, and send us make makeup and we'll wear it publicly, then that's great. Because I'm about making sure that people everywhere in the world can feel like they're part of this band. This band is not for a specific type of person. It's for anybody. It's, you know, if, if this, our music and our message can resonate with you and you work at a desk job in New Hampshire or you are a, a punk rock kid on the streets or you're a kid who lives in suburbia, whatever you are and our music can resonate with you, then that, that makes me happy. So we'll continue to push ourselves into every facet of your life. So it'll be impossible for you to ignore us. <laughs> Last question here and then we'll do a little station. Uh, Bradley Valandra wants to know, uh, Andy, what would your stripper name be? Dennis West Tower. <laughs> <laughs> well, no hesitation. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Is that your real name? No. Nope. <laughs> that would be my stripper name. <laughs> fantastic. I have nothing further to say about that question. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? It's Andy Six from Blackfell Brides, and you're watching Blank TV. Dangerous music for dangerous people. <laughs>